wonderful evening in Las Vegas as the Las Vegas Light Football Club getting ready to face off against DC United. Both teams getting ready for their respective seasons. Lots to work on, lots to improve, but lots of work has been done. Welcome everyone, my name is Juan Arango alongside Morgan Conklin. How you doing, girl? Good, how are you tonight? Doing great as we see <laughs> Las Vegas Lights getting ready for this matchup against another MLS team. Morgan, we've seen what they've been able to do. We've also seen what they need to work on. Your analysis right now of what needs to be done. Well, coming off this past game, if you look at the first goal against, the pressure's there in the midfield. There's five players around the ball throughout the buildup. No one steps, the back line is high. A simple ball across and they get beat. I said it in the first game that they played, the ideas are there, but the execution has to be better tonight. That's gonna be something that they need to look forward to. But coming off after this goal, they were down 2-0 at half, and we spoke with Isidro coming into this game, and he said at halftime, Chalice spoke with this team and said, we have a commitment to the fans. We have to score at least one goal. That's what they're looking for. Juan Calderon stepped up big, two goals for his team, beautiful set pieces, finishing both. And one thing that we, you, of course, we also heard about was the fact that a lot of opportunities weren't cashed in by Las Vegas, and that really needs to be worked on a little bit more. And of course, the mistakes that led to the eventual game winner by Kai Kamara. Exactly, and that's going to be one of the keys for tonight that they need to look forward to is capitalizing, getting on the other end of things, but first off, defending together. Of course, and we have to look at those keys because now we're going to look at Finley Toyota's keys of the match. Finley Toyota, an official sponsor of Las Vegas Lights Football Club. And starting off, the first key is defending together. Have to be all on the same page. I spoke about it with that first goal against. The idea is there, they have players in the mix. Who's gonna step up? Who's gonna really get stuck into a tackle once the high press is already established? Moving on to the next one, capitalize on chances. Like you had mentioned, they created more opportunities in the box. 19 times they got into the opponent's box in the first half. They need to build off that. I want to see in the run of play, how does it get how does it get better? They've already proven they can score on set pieces. And finally, better decision making. We've seen a couple red cards, ejections. It just comes down to timing the tackles, getting there at the right time, and just making smart decisions. And of course, we talk about this, and this is all the process leading up to what will be their season opener. Well, we'll find out how much they've improved when we return here on the Las Vegas Lights Football Club Television Network. Hey, yo, I'm Jafar Opso, and I'm here with my man, Brandon. Brandon, what makes you a better basketball player? Is it your shots? Nah, Jafar. Brandon, is it the crossover? Nah, Jafar. Is it the shoes? Nah, Jafar. Is it the height? Nah, Jafar. Then what is it? It's rubber report. Las Vegas history moment centered in the midst of downtown Las Vegas. The historic 5th Street School is a treasure that has been preserved through the years. Built in 1936, this Spanish mission style building served as the city's first permanent grammar school named for its location on 5th Street before it was renamed Las Vegas Boulevard. Though the school closed in the late 1960s, it continues to serve the community. The revitalized building is now home to an array of local arts and architectural organizations. In 1988, it was added to the National Historic Register and remains a cultural centerpiece in the heart of downtown. Those who buy the Las Vegas Centennial license plate help preserve and protect the city's history because proceeds fund projects like this. Grants to help celebrate, preserve, and provide education about the city's history are also available. For more information, call 702-229-6672. We're back as we're getting ready for the kickoff pre-match protocol going on as both captains for the evening. Of course, one being Steve Birnbaum, U.S. International, and Marcelo Alatorre, the captain for your Las Vegas Lights. 
And a lot of things to be looking at. And the first thing we have to start analyzing is the starting 11. And, of course, that starting 11 is brought to you by Zappos as they're presenting the Lights FC jersey. Check it out at zappos.com slash soccer. Let's start with DC United, Morgan, as it's David Osted in goal, De Leon, Briant, Birnbaum, and Fisher in the back, Junior Moreno with Ulises Segura, Zoltan Stieber in the middle, Paula Riola and Yamila Saad, former Atlanta United man, former Venezuela from Argentina, and Darren Maddox, the Jamaican international, recently acquired for Ben Olsen's side. And now for Las Vegas. Yeah, and looking at this, we saw a different look from them last game. They started with a three-back. Today, they go back to the four-back system. In a bit of a 4-3-3, they bring Christian Torres on at that left-back position. Tonight, keep an eye out for Julian Portugal, Alex Mendoza. Those holding midfielders are going to be busy. They have to squeeze the space in the midfield and really limit that space that DC is going to look to attack. In. So be quite a compelling bit of notes for those of you that want to see how these teams progressing. The rate of progression, of course, between last week in that dramatic encounter against Vancouver and what you talked about, Morgan, reducing mistakes, making better decisions, and more importantly, as you see right there, the one, the only, Jose Luis, An so Jose Luis Sanchez Sola, and El Chelis. And I think one thing that's been really interesting in interviews and stuff you read and from co coming from Chelis is he's just saying that they are looking to get better day after day, week after week. And he said right now he believes in this team. They're making progress. And I think we've seen that. Obviously, you look from their first game compared to their second, just how they attack got better. Obviously, the goals. But I mentioned it in the open tonight. I want to see how they look in the run of play. How do they attack together? And how do they capitalize, especially when they get in the box? Because that's been a key and something that they've been working on this week. And you mentioned, of course, Portugal as well as Mendoza. You start looking at players like Carlos Alvarez. You start looking at how those players start also kind of associating a little bit better. That's especially with so much or so you know few days between the acquisition of all these players and now those associations do take time to develop. Well, and you see some players starting to obviously get more minutes, earn some starting spots. There have been a couple cuts, a couple changes, and you see Calderon in the starting lineup, which. No surprise, he started the first game, definitely deserves the start tonight. Yeah, I, th yeah, I think he made Yeah, he made enough merits to be able to do that, yeah, absolutely. Ex exactly, but you see some players, the Sammy Ochoa, who's definitely gotten a lot more minutes than that first game. Um, but like you said, it's the preseason. These players are still getting used to one another, and it's just getting better practice after practice, game after game. And, of course, we are underway. DC United in their alternate road whites going to the left from the right and Las Vegas in there already becoming used to black kits with neon strip cross into the area way over but being able to recover it on the other side is like Diaz Mendoza turns and looks and is able to switch field that's interesting to look at as a cross another ball coming through and cleared away by DC United and good to see the Offensive ambition early on as it was Christian Torres either trying to center the ball or taking a shot quite meekly. I love that early on from this Lights team. Obviously, they had the kick, and anytime a team starts with the ball, you want to get after the back line, but especially this Las Vegas team that attacks very well. I like the fact that they get the ball wide to Diaz. He's a player that's very dangerous and really active when he has the ball. He's going to work hard to get those crosses off, and he already has two within the first minute. Jamil Assad and Joel Wiki. It all the way back to Rancho High School alum Angel Alvarez. DC United looking to control the DC United side. Morgan, if you start looking at what they did last year, more like what they didn't do, really gives you at least a, a base to be able to grow out of and improve significantly, especially with their additions. Here's Assad looking in the middle, trying to find Paul Arriola. Isaac Diaz. And one, we focus a lot, obviously, on Las Vegas and what they are doing, but this DC United squad opens up on March 5th. It's right around the corner. Right around the corner in Orlando. Exactly. So, so they have gone through their preseason. They've had their a couple of their games. This is really ending that for them. So they're a team also that's trying to work through some kinks and get, get it going because they, they start extremely soon. They start extremely soon, and, and it's been a very positive preseason for them, unbeaten so far. 
in their matches. And of course, their last one, a 2-1 victory that they had down in South Florida, or actually in, in the state of Florida, Northern Florida to be more precise. And you start to see the team beginning to gel a little bit, you know, the new additions starting to contribute more and more. Of course, one player that many are looking at is Jamil Assad. Young man with a tremendous football pedigree. Assad looking for his free kick to place it in the area to see if a teammate can strike it. The ball, the chance cleared away there at the last minute. It'll be a corner kick, or is it a goal kick? No, it's gonna be a goal kick for Las Vegas Lights. So far, Morgan, have to be impressed with at least the disposition. Mendoza, another mistake. DC United with the chance. Shot that gets deflected, still tricky. Sports past that second post, and it'll be a goal kick yet again. This all starts with a poor goal kick from Alvarez coming out of the back, and then Mendoza's in a spot where he coughs it up in a very tough position. And any team that you play against is going to look to capitalize on that, especially a team of MLS caliber. They're going to jump on that and obviously get a shot off like they did. So right now for Angel Alvarez, these kicks have to be better. Obviously, this one gets up. But that is, those are the little mistakes that seem to catch them. I like that. that he's, yeah, at least this one got up. So I mean, it's, it's an improvement there. But another foul, and play will be stopped as O'Neal Fisher there, the physicality of the match right now as the man that went down, of course, was Junior Moreno. You saw O'Neal Fisher and now Samuel Choa just making sure that he's okay. That all the parts are in the right places. Five minutes in and a yellow card being given already. Even a little bit too reckless. And going there into that whole issue. And it's something that we've talked about as well, Morgan, about how this team needs to kind of settle down as far as getting yellow cards or getting into situations where cards can condition an encounter early on. Yeah, we had a talk with Isidro this week, and that was one of the questions. And he had a great answer because he kind of gave you some insight into this team. And he was saying that this Vegas team, they've had a couple red cards, a couple ejections, but he was saying that a lot of it just comes down to they're looking to tackle and aren't timing it correctly. So they need to get to their tackles better. But he also spoke about... Cross there by Darren Maddox, not getting there on time is Ulises Segura. Waiting for that ball, but good anticipation. And now Las Vegas being handicapped a little bit as O'Neill Fisher brings it back. Continue your thought, please. Yeah, and going back to that, he also spoke about himself and Chalice as well because they were ejected from the last game. And he said he said he can't really speak too much about discipline with this team. He said because the way that he reacted is not something that they want to put out there. He said this team, as coaches, these players are mirror. They're looking at a mirror. And do as I say, not as I do. Exactly. So if they see that in their coach, sometimes that comes across in the game. But he was saying that what you saw from the coaches on the bench in that last game, he said, you will not see that again. That's not something that they are trying to put out there. Just at times, emotions get high. But it was very interesting hearing him talk about it because he said they, in American soccer, it's so physically demanding. It's not possible to challenge and get a good result when you're playing down a man. You have to have 11 v 11. And I think that's such a great comment. And it seems so simple, but it comes down to decision making and you can't put your team in that position where you're a man down. Yeah, especially when you, if you start doing it on a consistent basis, you're, you're kind of making your uphill battle a little bit steeper. Another set piece opportunity here for DC United, this time from the opposite side. Same range, and we'll see if Assad even see what can be done here with Zoltan Stieber, the Bulgarian, looking to swing that ball into the area with his left foot. Crossing it again, another ball that comes through the header that goes just wide. It scrapes the paint off the post. DC United already ringing alarms in the Las Vegas defense. That's a beautiful ball set in. Burnbaum just slips behind Gardunio. Gardunio is a big guy. He cannot have a player get behind him. He thinks he's there. It's just a little nudge by Burnbaum that gives him that space. 
If you're Gardino, you need to be goal side. That's on the inside of him. You cannot be caught in front of a player because the ball comes over and look what happens. And I like that you mentioned that point. He, he needs to be in front, not not near him, but just at least be, you know, being able to mark him a little bit, not have that space that can really mean a big difference in, in what an opportunity can develop. The throw in for Las Vegas, correct? Right? Going back to that, especially yeah. with Gardunia, when you're such a big body, you're one of those players that is almost expected to get on the end of it because of your size. Las Vegas heading over on the East Washington Ave side of the stadium. Goal on that side. DC United recovering once more was Frederick Briant, the Frenchman. They're clearing the ball out, clearing out of harm's way. Looking to see what can be done. A lot of play out on the wing so far. That's another thing that we need to start looking at as far as Las Vegas trying to elaborate some more connections, especially in the middle, getting Carlos Alvarez involved. Well, they have those wide players that are so busy. They like the ball at their feet. They want to combine. They want to cross. But it's one of those things as the game goes on. It's just moving the ball around and finding the open space, finding those pockets. Ball coming in, and it gets clearly dominated by DC United and finally Joy Wiki knocking it out, just knocking it anywhere, but trying to keep DC United in that final oh, third. Oh, oh. One thing that Wiki just did there, it looked so simple, but the fact that he closed that space, I love that he did not give DC any space to turn and get at them because if that attacker was able to turn, it's a foot race at that point. Wiki doesn't want to get caught there. Wiki wins there, but not without Ala Torre committing the foul on the young Argentine Assad. Just wanted to hold off on the one because it was important that you mentioned that another card there, or at least the attempt of a card, is Ala Torre. Can't really defend that too much as Ala Torre goes into the referee's book. And that's the decision making. He knew it when it happened, but if that first ball is won, or at least challenged a little bit better where it doesn't bounce after it gets past both of them, that whole incident is avoided. So when I speak about decision making, it's obviously in that moment, do you need to kick him to bring him down? Probably not, you have another player helping. But if the challenge is a little better, there's no foul, there's no yellow card. 10 minutes in, two bookings by referee Alejandro Mariscal. Both in favor, or at least both given to Las Vegas Lights. Miguel Chelis gesticulating from his position, and now DC United with another set piece from the wing, and quickly they go short. Assad, great heads up there. Is it Stiva looking to swing it with his left foot, cleared away. Assad now trying to knock it back inside. Does so, Darren Maddox waiting, but he's not going to get anywhere close to that ball. Paula Viola fighting, getting it, but of course the foul was called prior to that. 11 minutes in, still you see both teams kind of in this feeling out phase. They're just trying to figure out what one and the other end up playing right now. Yeah, and it's early, but I think there's been a couple moments where I think the lights need to step up and just tackle, get into a tackle, get stuck in, whether it's in the air, whether it's on a cross. But I, it's a good start, obviously, 0-0. Zero, zero. They're able to play. They're able to push the ball up the flank. I want to see a little more movement in the middle. Asking you shall receive, at least the intention was there, is Joel Wiki getting around a defender. A la torre. That happens. Oh, that's, that's wonderful when a central defender has that skill. He does exactly that. Samuel Choa to Portugal. Out wide to Calderon. So he looks to swing it, and Samuel Choa making a run to the first post. Stationary Portugal, top of the 18. As you start to see a little bit of scrambling going on, Ochoa being marked well. Ball goes over everyone's head, except, of course, DC United player right there, O'Neill Fisher. And the counter is Assad had room to roam. He's going to take some time, knock it deep, and help the defense reset. The counter is where Las Vegas has issues, and that started from the ball pops out, Alatore gets it and settles for a long shot, but then tried to keep his run going when they lost possession. At that moment, he's out of position, and that's one less defender that you have, and the other three have to slide and try to shift for that area. So when it comes to Alatore, when it pops out, if he can pass and then get forward and connect, rather than taking the shot and trying to get forward off the ricochet. 13 minutes in, still no score. 
Bryant to Darren Maddox. Nick DeLeon dropping back, but it's Paul Arriola trying to dribble past the defender. Unable to do so. That quickly goes back to the Las Vegas Lights. Morgan, you, what do you think about the jersey? Um, I've never been a part of a club or a team that has jerseys like that. I would like to. I've never really seen jerseys like that before this, so I'm all about it. I definitely think it totally fits everything that we've experienced and heard about this Las Vegas club and just what they're doing and how it's different. I love it. Okay, do you want to get one? Yeah, and I love okay. Zappos too, sure, so it's awesome. And because I'll let you know how exactly you can do it because season tickets, well, for your Las Vegas Lights inaugural season includes a team jersey. You want to find out more? Well, you have to go and get those details at lightsfc.com backslash tickets. Of course, I think it would not be bad. I was actually on the phone with Zappos a couple days ago because they have the best customer service and I had a question about something. And I was talking about the lights with my customer service guy. And he was just saying, like, yeah, you know, we're the sponsor. That's we're huge fans crazy. of them, love what they're doing. And we were having this whole conversation about the Las Vegas lights. It was awesome. Maddox is going one-on-one -on -one against Garduño. Maddox trying to use his speed, but he's not able to get around him, but still generates that corner kick first of the match at the 15 minute mark of the first half. Still no score from Las Vegas. It's really strong defending from Gardunio as Maddox faces up, just closing the space because if Maddox was able to get that touch, he has the speed to get there before Gardunio, but a really nice job of just holding his ground and getting the poke in to get the ball out. Comes outside with the potential in swinger. Referee Alejandro Mariscal looking to some civility amongst that mass of humanity going far post and Alvarez is not able to get there and we'll do it all over again as it'll be Assad taking the corner once again Alvarez again looking but again DC United doing a good job of distracting as that ball gets knocked away quickly and to see if a counterattack can brew, but good job by DC United of dropping back and regrouping rather quickly, preventing that counterattack from ever even generating itself. Portugal. Samuel Ochoa not able to get past Briant. Still, Las Vegas getting the ball back into the middle. Ooh, good clash there. Good physical tackle is a, of course, Calderon going down. The referee says, no, no, it's going to be a foul. And he's also asking for the stretcher to come out. Let's see how this play comes through. Good work there and ooh, very tough physical play there by Briant. Kind of feels it a little bit afterwards. And that's a tough tackle on both sides. Both going in, focused on the ball, not as aware of where the other player is. Obviously, they're trying to get to the ball, but it's preseason, I think it's a smart decision. Just stop the play. There's just make sure both players are all right. Um, because that's definitely a tough tackle with all that momentum. As I mentioned before, Alejandro Mariscal, the referee. First assistant Eduardo Mariscal, second assistant Alejandro Aguilera, and fourth official Joe Pickens. So so far. No, We've seen um, both teams rather combative. I mean, the physicality is there. Yeah, they're talking uh, I mean, if, about if something. somebody came in and, and saw this match, they would probably think, based on the intensity of it, it is a regular season. And, and both teams are taking it as that because of the repercussions or how also the proximity of the beginning of the regular season is as well. Well, and you have to treat it as a game because this is how you see where your team is and how you get ready for the regular season. So obviously, if you play at a lower level, when you start the season, you're going to play at a lower level. So yes, it is a real game, and it's obviously a chance for these players to get used to one another, but also with the intensity, this is Las Vegas, and we know this is what they bring. They're playing home, their final preseason game, like you said, but I guess preseason wrap-up, final game against an MLS squad. 
this is what they bring. As Priyank comes back on. Plays resume, but it seems like everyone's trying to get back into position to resume action, if you will. And Briant has some room to roam, sends it deep. Looking out wide for Arriola, but it goes to Darren Maddox. Ball gets cleared out by Las Vegas and continuing to press forward is DC United. Maybe not with the most elegant of precision so far as O'Neill Fisher looking to send the ball into the area once again. Segura, the ball comes through, and Alvarez able to bring that ball down rather quickly. It's interesting to see some tendencies to it, and just to bring some points across throughout the broadcast. To start this, because many of you, and, and you start talking to fans, and you start talking to other colleagues from around the country, and they're always asking, what's up with Las Vegas? They play a little differently, and it'd be interesting to start looking at some points, some finer points of this style that Las Vegas wants to play. Yeah, well, first off, defensively, they have that high press. They're going to get numbers behind the ball, and they're going to make it difficult because when you cross that line of confrontation, when you start getting the ball close to where they start defending, there's numbers there, and it's hard to get past them because they're going to come at you. But also, attacking-wise, they like to get forward, and they want to create chances. They want to get in the opponent's box. And that's a really good job defensively, real quick, right there. Right the there. fact that they had numbers, that's what they lacked in that first game, in that first goal against Vancouver, was stepping to that ball. There was numbers, no one stepped, and that's exactly what you just saw, the way that they squeezed together. That's fantastic team defending from Las Vegas and something that they needed. You see right there the replay, and exactly what Morgan's mentioning, you're gonna see right there, or actually prior to that play, how they were able to recover. The, the recovery seems a lot quicker, a lot sharper. But going on that play, Diaz is a player, Isaac Diaz, he draws defenders and he's able to get those fouls because he gets his body involved. He's a little bit smaller, but he's so quick that he can draw those fouls. So he's difficult to play against. He usually drifts wide and finds his way into that right flank. But when he's on the ball, he's going to create, whether it's at his feet or drawing a foul and getting a set piece. Just like the one that we have right now, in the 20 minute mark, The man that was able to get the, histor the historic goals, two of them, I should say, for the Las Vegas Lights the other day against Vancouver. What better player to have behind the ball on a set piece than him? He's been able to establish himself rather quickly. Trying to bring it back, bring it forward. Five players for the lights. Two big boys, Garduño and Wiki, stepping up. Jumping in into the attack, maybe a little bit more. Cristian Torres. And from Tupalcingo Hidalgo in Mexico. Alderon as Wiki wins the ball. Still bouncing forward and DC United looking to break out and quickly you start to see how Las Vegas presses. But again, you start to see where the goalkeeper has to be. Angel Alvarez reading that play very well, anticipating and positioning himself well, therefore thwarting that attack. But Darren Maddox again, hardworking Jamaican international, able to win the ball, collect the ball, and also commit the, or be able to get the foul in the process. I spoke about how Las Vegas has to be better decision-making and transition. Sometimes they get caught high. That's the perfect example. They have most of their defenders. Torres, Gardunia, Sweeky getting forward. This ball comes through, and guess who has to come out off his line and say that? Angel Alvarez. And you start, and again, a lot of people start talking about Ferrinho and how the way he plays, and now you see why the goalkeeper has to be like having those, at least having those types of qualities. Another set-piece opportunity. Is it number four now for DC United from outside? And Assad, once again, looking to take it through. The header missed and goes past everyone as Berm. Actually, that was Frederick Briant missing on that opportunity. And it'll be a goal kick for Las Vegas Lights.
they use turf to cover the infield. They have grass that they put there, but that's something that's dangerous because it's already difficult to play on that, and especially now that it's not even because the turf has popped up a little bit. That's something that the referee needs to just keep an eye on because that can become dangerous, especially around that goal area. You can slip, you can lose your footing rather easily. Whole variation of things that can occur. As Isaac Diaz has to send the ball back, the foul was retroactive. And quickly, Julian Portugal dropping it back. Garduño. Fisher, continuing to do with Assad and Fisher, connecting on the near side, another foul, and again, another foul just to add to the topic that we've been talking about throughout the early stages of this first half. Torre now pretty much with a lease on life. He's already been sent off before. Actually, he was sent off in the last match against Vancouver, so he needs to keep an eye on what he's doing, have better judgment. Two words, decision making. And I think I'm going to say it most or, this game. That's just being smart. Yes, you want to get in his way. You want to knock the runner off his path just a little bit. But when you get handsy and you stick a couple in there, you're already on a yellow. This ref has shown that he's not afraid to give them. Gave too early. You have to be careful, especially for Alatori, who is the captain, a leader, one of these veteran players that the younger guys look up to. He knows better. It just has to be smarter. You can bump the player, but you don't need to get your hands in there and shove him. It's too obvious. Briant. Looking for Maddox and Wiki able to flick that ball away. Isaac Diaz. Fisher. La Torre winning that battle. Diaz trying to get a little bit too much in the flare category as Assad now controlling it in the middle of the pitch. He switches sides. And De Leon. Gimpy there. Another cross, looking for Maddox. Wiki able to stick his foot out. Another corner kick coming up for DC United as we reach the 25th minute of play. Solid defense from Wiki, just getting goal side, positioning himself on the side of the goal so if the ball came through like it did, he can get his foot there. That's just textbook defending, very simple. The swinger coming up. De Leon in the area. Same thing with Briant. Maddox, Birnbaum. Came close on a previous occasion. Easy, easy, easy. Top of the six. Alvarez with the punch. Aaron at that. Cleared out finally. And a foul being called by the referee. And a yellow card. This time it will be for DC United. Steve Birnbaum going into the referee's book. That'll be at the 26th minute of play. On a night like this and many other nights, it's going to be a major advantage for fans to come early. It's going to be rather festive week in, week out. Well, that's why I encourage you fans to be sure to come early to every lights game for the Zappos tailgate. Beard garden, food trucks, live music in that ball coming through. All of that, well, ladies and gentlemen, it will start beginning at 5.30 p.m. So don't miss it. The Zappos tailgate. Corner kick, first time that the lights will have one on this evening. So if they go sure you see how they're trying to line up. Wiki directing traffic. Garduño looking to get a pick. Calderon. Going first post, cleared away quickly. Arriola giving chase, another cross. Samuel Choa, another ball that comes through and a great save there by Brian to prevent that ball from going forward. Now the transition on the opposite side. Here comes DC United, full speed ahead with Ulises Segura, the Costa Rica International, trying to slot that ball through, but great recovery by the Lights defense. And Angel Alvarez settling everything down. That's exactly what that was, was good transitional defending from Las Vegas, getting back on the other end. But this was a great second ball sent in. I love Sammy Ochoa hitting that back across. He didn't have an angle to go to goal, to go to goal himself. But the way that the lights responded and got back, nobody got in for an unnecessary tackle. They just worked together to squeeze the space, 
into an area where they could win it. And now you see referee Joe Pickens getting into it with El Chelis. Stepped out of his technical box. Throw in coming up for the lights. Actually, no, it's going to be a set piece. He's on my whistle, doing it all over again. Another chance. Let's see what the lights can do on this as we're in the 28th minute of play. Still no score here. I'm Juan Arango. Juan Arango. I can't even spell my. I can't pronounce my own name. I got a problem there. But I can't pronounce my partner's name. That's Morgan Conklin. Calderon. Got bailed out there by Darren Maddox after a poorly taken free kick. Las Vegas will have yet another corner coming up. It's interesting. I mean, you talked about the second ball. Though. The corner didn't work so much, but when they came back second time around, everything working so well, especially with the Ochoa header back into, into space. And it was to that far post. It got over the first defender. Taking it through the header that comes right through. And Wiki just wide of that near post. Almost makes it 1-0. Good chance for the lights on this opportunity. The far post, that's what I just mentioned. Wiki's able to sneak in behind. He did the right thing heading it down, but his body position, he was already past that far post. So by the time he heads it down, it's not on frame. But I love the fact that he tries to keep it low and he gets in behind. But more importantly, Diaz is able to get the ball to that back post. De Leon looking to reset quickly. As we're in the 29th, now 30th minute of play. Dropping back to Briant. Opening things up as O'Neill Fisher going. Almost himself near that touch line. As it goes to Stever. Segura waiting for Maddox. Waiting for that ball to come through. Missing on the first opportunity was Christian Torres. And the infraction getting called against the former Cholos man, much to the disapproval of the fan base. There'll be a corner kick coming up for DC United. Penalty area, ball still bouncing around. Maddox couldn't latch on to it. Now we'll go to the opposite side of the pitch and hopefully DC United look to reset. Maddox, good job there with Paul Arriola. Looking to, looking to hit it, but ends up in the stands and that opportunity ends up in a tremendous stud. And in that moment, you could see Vegas ball watching a little bit. Alatore is not happy about that. He and Ochoa squeeze the space, it slipped through, and he's onside. Nobody tracks that. Fans enjoying the evening. Uh, obviously, a little on the chilly side. Still enjoying the environment as Steva drops back and gives it to Briant. How much Darren Maddox has to drop back. That's exactly what I was going to talk about. You could see it at the top of the screen. Maddox comes really deep into the midfield to get the ball, but a great job from Gardinho staying on his back, going with him so he couldn't turn. Gets a little unlucky there, misses his tackle. If he times that correctly, that doesn't happen. But I love the fact that he's going with Maddox because that has to happen. It ha you're absolutely right, it does have to happen. If not, he's gonna wreak havoc all over the place. You see right there, he clips his support leg. Maddox looks to turn. You see Gardinho go on that other side, so he clips him. If I'm a center back, I'm not trying to win that tackle because 
like you just saw Maddox tried to spin, if he spins and stays on his feet, he's gone. So if you're Gardino, go with him. That is great. That part's on, but hold your ground. So if he tries to turn, you're right there. Or if he holds it and plays backwards, nothing happens. As they say, he who sins and prays, draws. Segura drops it back to Birnbaum. That'll be one of many Chilisa's sayings. Garduño, that's Torres now in 33rd minute of play. It's been very box to box, very middle of the pitch type of encounter. Both teams have not shied away from showing the cleats here and there, which is indicative kind of what many would be expecting in this type of match, a bit of a dress rehearsal. I mean, it is a, a dress rehearsal for both teams. Isaac Diaz. Stieber. Darren Maddox. Stieber again trying to serve it into space. Anticipated nicely by Torres and he's able to sweep it away for a throw in. A safe play there from Torres, but that buildup is exactly what we kind of saw in the Vancouver game. The ball's in the midfield, there's players trying to squeeze, come back, but nobody steps, and the ball gets played through. So that's where Las Vegas needs to be careful is when they're a little out of sorts and around the ball, someone has to step up and get there. As DC looking for a way to break in between lines. Darren Maddox not getting there on time. Ala Torre, now Wiki collecting it that settling type of authority in the back. Ball set deep for Isaac Diaz. He battles old Neil Fisher. Finally won again by Torre. Here's a good opportunity brewing. It's Carlos Alvarez. Diaz, you start to see some good connections. First time we see that in a while. First time that we really mentioned Carlos Alvarez's name. Interesting that we start talking about him. Alvarez, of course, was drafted by Chivas USA when, well, that same Chelis was the coach of Chivas USA. And it was interesting because I had the chance to speak to him back then. And he said something very intriguing as the foul being committed there on top of the pitch, or in the middle of the pitch, I should say. That'll be number three for Las Vegas Lights. And that'll be Juan Julian Portugal. That'll be at 35. Right there from behind, just, I mean, really can't say too much about it. Just trying to stop the play. Sometimes is there a different way to do it potentially, but if his touch is a little bit better. But again, uh, again, to notice too, what you just mentioned, some the, the coverage between lines, you saw him not have a lot of support from someone stepping up, therefore he had to commit that foul. Exactly, and that's something when you look at film, you notice if so-and-so would have done his job, if you would have done your job, I wouldn't have had a yellow card. And obviously Portugal isn't saying that to his teammates, but using those players because you can always look back to where the breakdown was. If there's players around, the space would have been squeezed and the ball would have been intercepted. Wiki skies it straight up in the air. Bounces back, all the way back, and all the way back to Angel Alvarez. So going back to that Carlos Alvarez story, Alvarez is at the MLS Combines. Shelly uh, sees him, says, I want that guy. Drafts him, number 10 overall in, in the MLS draft. And they ask him, why Carlos Alvarez? He said, well, he was the only player that was looking up. Then he had the ball dribble. He said, everybody else was looking down except for Carlos Alvarez. He was the only one that was surveying the pitch, sending the balls deep, and, and that's what impressed him most about Carlos Alvarez in that particular camp. Well, I'm dropping some history on us. Yeah, yeah. But it's those little things. If you're a coach like Chalice, you know what kind of, you know the style of play that your teams play with, and yeah. if there's that one player that fits in because you don't have to teach him to look yeah. up more often because most players at this level do that, but if you aren't doing that all the time, it's difficult to teach that because it's something that you constantly have to remember. So if you have a player that always is looking around and always sees where he can play the ball and how he can help his team, 
he's miles ahead of everyone else. He was talking about it in, in the best way, I guess, to kind of use it. That's the translation from Spanish to English. He was talking about like this, this footballistic je ne sais quoi. He just starts saying it's it's nothing that you can really attest if you look at a scouting report or a stat sheet. It's just something that you observe and, and some some certain behaviors, body gestures, gesticulations when you have the ball at your feet that kind of tells you, hey, this this kid can play. This kid can move around. This kid can make a difference. But going back to that, that's often time. Watch this opportunity, Morgan. The chance, the shot that goes over. Unbelievable was just missed there by Calderon. Might have rushed it a little bit. Might have heard the footsteps coming, but hits it way over and off target. That's exactly what it was. The ball slipped through. That's not a place that he really expected it to get through, especially with the defender, a poor header. He had so much time, could have brought it down, probably had another touch as well. But when you get in that moment, you're not expecting to have time. You know you're going to have a defender on your back. Struck it pretty well, just obviously got too much under it. Garduño, as we're into the final seven minutes plus, see how much time the referee will add on. A la torre. Teisac Diaz, we're starting to see a bit more fluidity offensively from the lights. Mendoza, as both he and Portugal starting to move around quite well. A la torre, not enough real estate and gives the ball right back to DC United. Zoneal Fisher, former Seattle Sounders man. Had a lot of time with Seattle Sounders too. Garduño dropping it all the way back to Angel Alvarez. Now, I'm going to start picking your brain a little bit here. Second half, what do you start looking for based on how you've seen this first half? If you're Chelis or even if you're Ben Olsen? I'll answer that two ways. Since we are where we are in the season. Answer it as many ways as you want, to be honest with you. <laughs> I just have two for you oh, right just now. just two? Okay, fine. Maybe more later. Right, but right. since this is preseason and we've seen some changes, right now this group for Las Vegas is doing their job. Are there a couple of players that Chalice maybe wants to see before the season really gets going potentially? So if that happens, when those players come in, you want the same effort, the same energy, the same impact. That's what you're asking for, if not more of an impact. But if you bring this group out and you're looking for the win, Vegas, they need to keep their foot on the gas for the next, if we're coming out of half 45 minutes, or plus if there's more. But one of their things that they, one of their strengths is bringing that energy and being able to continue with those runs, continue getting at the opposing back line. And they've shown that it's gotten better as this half has gone on. So at halftime, it has to be even better. They can't go back at all and can't take 45 more minutes to get going. And we've seen it once they do get going, the games have become quite exciting. Of course, we've seen how their second halves have been so far in this preseason as it's Jamila San cutting back, looking, surveying, and having to drop it back to his teammate. Timing there is Zoltan Stieber sends it out wide. Arriola gives chase and Alvarez keeping it in, dangerously so, and the foul's gonna be committed, he gets bailed out. Is the referee gonna say continue? As Arriola will get a bit of a talking to and instead it'll be DC United's ball. Let's see what happens. I, I'm trying to figure out where Arriola is right there, the headlock, or the pseudo headlock, I guess. I don't. To prevent him. I just. And I don't mind the footwork there. I see what he's trying to do, but if you're going to body the ball out and try to keep it, you have to get your body in front. I know you're a goalkeeper, probably not used to doing that, but you have to get your shoulder in and really block the ball so you win it. Ball coming through. Steve with the header, and it goes right off of the body of one of the players for Las Vegas, and it'll be, of course, off or not, as a foul was called prior to that. Las Vegas just got bailed out by that foul because four minutes before half, they almost were going to have to defend against a PK. Sammy Ochoa on the post is ready for that ball when it comes back. It hits his hand, definitely would have been a handball, would have gone to a PK, but the foul brought that yeah. all back. That saved them right there because they've been so strong the last couple of minutes, and they want that momentum to try to get one before half, but especially going into halftime. Absolutely. Segura, the former Saprisa man, finding Arriola. Full speed ahead, left foot, the chance, the shot, and DC United take the lead. Yamil Assad with the goal. You talked about it just a few minutes ago, Morgan, or just a few seconds ago, how 
they ended up paying for a mistake that they committed. There's been a couple times Alatori out wide right has been caught forward. This was another one, and he's punished for it. Tries to get back, cannot get there in time. It forces Gardunio to come over and try to stop that ball. Then there's no one to account for all the runners. That is one that if the ball is kept in the midfield, it doesn't happen. But Alatori has to be a little bit better with decision making. He doesn't need to push forward at all times because he can't get back in time. He doesn't have that pace against some of these players. So pick and choose your moments. I see him getting forward, but when the ball's in the midfield, there's no need to be past that. So Yamila Saad, yet another goal. Three already in the preseason. Here that was with Atlanta United last year. Great, contrib great contributor for Tata Martino's side, who had a tremendous campaign to the playoffs in their first season. Product of Vélez Arfield. Of course, his father played at Vélez Arfield as well, played in that Intercontinental Cup back in 1994. 2-0 win for Vélez against none other than AC Milan. Speaking of Alatorre, again, this last buildup, that's the perfect time to get forward because Diaz pops off the back line, comes into the midfield, so he's not high. That's your time to get forward and get into that space that he just left. Alatorre did it beautifully and was able to connect. So that's with picking your moments. When the ball's in the midfield, like I said, do you need to bomb forward and try to make something happen? No, there's no space. But as it gets forward, if Diaz leaves it, he's in there. Also, on that play, give a lot of credit to Ulises Segura, who had maybe about three, four, five seconds to hold it, collect it, look, survey, and saw the run that was being made on the left-hand side as well. Exactly. He was able to find that space and get the touch to pick Here's another up. ball that comes through. Alvarez anticipating very well. Great leave it a work there by Alvarez coming way off his line, coming way out of his box to prevent what could have been the second goal. Defensively, Las Vegas struggles against those little slip balls. It's the spacing. It's not pressuring. They are vulnerable when that little slip ball comes through and splits an outside back in the center back, or the two center backs. That's really what lets them down. Calderon. We're in the final minute. We'll see how much stoppage time, if there's any stoppage time that's given. There's a chance, trying to curl it, but not enough pace behind that ball by Marcelo Alatorre, easily collected there by David Osted. Beautiful response to get those numbers forward. I don't know if this ball was mishit. If it was directed there, it was perfect. It was, if it was mishit, it ended up perfectly. The way it slides across the front. But I love the numbers that Las Vegas sends forward. And they connect the pass so no one's out of position. The second time we see them connecting from the outside in. Segura getting past two defenders. As he again has been Another one of those additions that Ben Olsen's looking really forward to seeing him play on a consistent basis. Was one of the big playmakers for Saprissa. Not this past semester, but the semester before last in Costa Rican football. And that should be, yeah, well, it'll be one more, a couple more seconds as we'll see what occurs in this particular series. And of course, stoppage time is brought to you by La Bonita. La Bonita is the official grocery store of the Las Vegas Lights. I'm not Mexican, but if you need to come, I'll go to La Bonita and I'll make you some chilaquiles. How about that, Morgan? Okay. You didn't understand a word I said. <laughs> Chilaquiles, I'll, I'll, I'll make you some chilaquiles, man. Tremendous stuff there. And speaking of tremendous stuff, that's the end of the first half. A goal by Yamil Assad in the 42nd minute. The difference so far in this match. Morgan Conklin, your thoughts? Really strong from Las Vegas. I think that goal right before half is obviously a bummer going into the half, but just because of the way that they played. It came down to decision making, just a lapse of judgment at the time, but Props to DC United being aware and taking advantage of it. We'll be right back with more.
So here at the Rebel Report Kitchen, we eat and drink sports. How do you like your sport? How about football? <laughs> and basketball? Their energy is always as high as With top-notch reporting and in-depth interviews, a serving of the Rebel Report is exactly what you're looking for. Tune in to get your fill. Oh, indeed. Well, reminder, time to pay the sewer bill. Aha, aha. That's it now. Check, book, check, check, book. Put this up online. And done. Where are the stamps? Goodman. No, I'm Mayor Goodman. Sewer bill done. That was easy. Power bill. Now you can save time. Pay your sewer bill online. Go to LasVegasNevada.gov. And a cure. Keeping Every Pet and Person Together is a program that assists people who need basic support in keeping their pet. We understand and recognize the heartbreak of having to surrender a pet due to things that are beyond your control. That's why we will sit down with you and work out ways to help you keep your pet. So don't give up. We're here to help. You can visit the Animal Foundation at AnimalFoundation.com. to do downtown now you can be in and out in no time thank you when you need to make quick stops use this grab and go lot or one of the many free 10 to 15 minute loading and unloading zones around downtown just look for these signs and park for free for more great tips on where to park in downtown las vegas you can download the park me app one nil after 45 minutes here in Las Vegas as DC United in the 42nd minute courtesy of Yamil Assad was able to open the scoring here at Cashman Field. I'm Juan Arango alongside Morgan Conklin. Morgan, we start to see some good moments and we started to see some bad moments. I'm gonna let you take it away, start analyzing. Well, early on, one of, I would say, Angel Alvarez's worst moments of the first half, if I'm gonna be honest, he got much better from here. Very poor goal kick. Another poor clearance. Mendoza isn't ready for the ball, puts them in a tough spot, but he was able to rebound so much better after that. His goal kicks have been great, but that was a tough moment for him, especially early on, because DC was able to almost capitalize on that. Another one under pressure early on, Garduño is on the wrong side of his attacker. Just has to get goal side. This whole thing's avoided, and he's the one winning that ball, able to clear it out. One of the best moments, though, for Las Vegas going forward. I love Puiki getting forward on the corner. Great header, he heads it down just like he should, but he's, his body is just past the goal, so he's unable to convert on that one. This ball, though, caught Calderon by surprise. A poor clearance from a defender, no clearance from a defender. He rushes the kick a little bit. He's not expecting to have time in the box. No one expects that. And of course, you start to see how things developed in the first half, and that, of course, the ball from Ulises Segura to Paul Arriola. And he finds the Argentine, Yamil Assad, for the only goal of the match up to now. And Vegas just caught out of position. Alatore tries to get back. Garduño has to come over, as he should, to put that pressure. But then it leaves a player open in the middle as players are getting over. Decision making, just a little bit tough there in the midfield. But for Vegas, it was good over the first half. And they need to take that positive momentum and bring it into the second half. And you mentioned it, how that momentum that they were able to acquire towards the end was very important to really build on this second half. As you see right there, the score at halftime. And we're going to start looking at the jersey unveiling. That was something that really caused a lot of, well, a lot of interest in the Las Vegas community. We'll show you that right now.
We couldn't be more excited to have Zappos as our presenting partner. They represent downtown Las Vegas. They represent everything that we want to represent. When you look at two companies, two cultures, two groups, the synergies are amazing. Zappos represents looking outside the box. Zappos represents having fun. Zappos represents a new culture, a new way of thinking, and that's exactly what we want Lights FC to, to, to represent. When we started this team, we had a blank sheet of paper, and we looked for people in the Las Vegas community that were for Las Vegas, by Las Vegas, of Las Vegas. Zappos was at the top of that list. They represent exactly what we want to be. We couldn't be more excited to be shoulder to shoulder with them with our jersey. It's um, really exciting. About a year ago, uh, it came up on the Zappos radar that Brett uh, Lashbrook with the Las Vegas Lights was trying to bring a professional soccer team to Las Vegas. To be honest, after meeting Brett and the team that he had assembled, he was so full of energy and they were so excited about bringing a team to downtown. Zappos was kind of sold uh, after our initial meeting that we wanted to be part of the Las Vegas Lights football team. We started to look at what uh, having a pro soccer team downtown could bring to the community. After signing the agreement, we worked uh, on designing or helping to design the jersey. We have a great gift shop on the Zappos campus and we're gonna featuring a lot of the Lights merchandise. You know, another thing that's great is this year, 2018, it's the World Cup. So soccer is on the forefront on the world stage again. And it's really great that the Las Vegas Lights can launch at the same year as the World Cup's going on. And that you can have this experience, especially for our Las Vegas community, right in your backyard. We are Vegas. This is the entertainment capital of the world. We have to be different. No cookie cutter, nothing traditional, nothing that any other team has. From our name, from our logo, from our jersey, it's got to represent Las Vegas, downtown Las Vegas, being different and being wow. My name is Fernando Cabestani. I'm an, I do many different things here at Zappos. Um, I'm an art director, I would say. When Zappos partner with Las Vegas Lights, uh, they approach us or they give us the opportunity to uh, design the jersey, which was super exciting. Like, I love soccer and I love soccer jerseys, actually. Uh, so it was super exciting to me. Um, they approached me and I, I said, yes, of course. Yeah, we started working with them. So the lights already had a logo, which was a big part of it. It had to define the, the color scheme. And the lights team already had an idea of using the lights, like neon lights. And I thought it was a great element, but I wanted to like portray a lot more of what we are, like people as people in Las Vegas, like show, like it's, it's so rich. It's such a rich culture and people are so like nice and warm. So I just wanted to show that it's, it's the blood that runs in our, in our, um, in our body. So I wanted to show that passion. I wanted to show that energy. I wanted to show that. It's a great honor to me to be able to design the first jersey of the first professional soccer team in Las Vegas. Like it was, I like a lot of teams, but now it's Las Vegas Lights. Let's play soccer, Vegas. Yeah! Oh! 
And I hope we see a lot of those jerseys getting lifted in the second half. But as of right now, it's been DC United getting the advantage. Yamil Assad being the goal scorer up to now. Second half coming up soon, but we'll have much more during this halftime. DC United up 1-0. We'll be right back with more here on the Las Vegas Lights FC Football Network. It's important to make sure your pet is kept up to date on vaccinations. Vaccines can help prevent many fatal contagious diseases. Rabies vaccines are required by law in Clark County, and other vaccines such as distemper and parvo are great at keeping your pet healthy and happy. Visit AnimalFoundation.com for more information on our low-cost vaccine clinic. It's provided us with the Congratulations. Do you, so help you, God. I do, so help me, God. <laughs> Back here for the second half. Las Vegas Lights FC football. Want to go alongside Morgan Conklin. And the fans are really looking forward to the second half. Vegas have been a second half team, if you will, Morgan. And of course, we talk about not only this preseason, we, have to, we also have to look at what they're up against in the first five matches of the season when they open things off against Fresno FC. And none of these games are going to be easy at nope, all. That's nope. definitely a welcome to the USL Absolutely. schedule. Yeah. Um, Fresno, another team in their first year in the USL. That'll be, I think, a bit of a rivalry between these two. And then obviously hosting Reno, their first home game, another team from the state of Nevada. But then you're facing... Swope, Sacramento, and San Antonio. Luckily, all those are at home because those are going to be very difficult. You look at Sacramento, new head coach this year, and San Antonio, such a strong season last year. Well, Some of the pieces yeah. that they got. I think you're forgetting, too, the defending two-time defending Western Conference champions. Oh, that's right. They yeah. did pretty well last yeah, yeah, year, right? I think, I think, and the year before that. So, I mean. Yeah, they. I think they're pretty good. Yeah, I, I think they're pretty good <laughs> last time I heard, but, you know, rumors do swirl around. But, yeah, I, I mean, oh, seriously speaking, though, now, I mean, it's not an easy schedule, as you mentioned, at all. And it almost makes sense now. They've played their three, after this game, their three preseason matches against MLS teams, and that's probably the best tune-up for the regular season because it's ready, set, go, right from the start. I mean, I mean if there's a context in which you can use the term litmus test, well, I think that's exactly it, as they will come straight out of the gate getting tested week in and week out. So interesting to see what is occurring. We have to wait and see what instructions both El Chelis, of course, his son Isidro Sanchez will be giving or are giving right now as they still haven't stepped onto the pitch here at Cashman Field. And in speaking with Isidro and also in speaking with Chelis as well and a lot of the things that have been said, this Las Vegas team is almost built around the fans, for the fans around the fans, at least that's how it seems. And Talking about their game last week, he was just saying, he told this team at half, these fans deserve a goal. They came to watch you play. You need to reward them. And I have a feeling there was a similar talk like that at halftime because 
these fans really get the team going. When we spoke this past week, they were saying that the fans kind of gave them the energy in the last game, and especially after that first goal, got them going for the second. You know, you, you made, that, made that point very clear. It seems like this relationship that Chelis wants is, is one of those that's very complimentary and I guess very interesting as far as how they both feed off each other. I mean, you, you see how the team feeds off the fans and vice versa. And, and seeing how that really can create a very important energy, you see Diago Kobayashi getting ready to come on, the former Japanese international. And talking about, you know, Chalice and his relationship with the fans, that was something that he'd said a while ago, is that they pay to see you. They take their money, their time to come watch you play, to escape from whatever's going on. You need to please them and put on a show. And that also is perfect for what this Las Vegas franchise is all about. It's entertainment. It's exciting attacking soccer. And obviously, look at everything that they're doing for the fans. They have the electric company, their supporters group. And I think it's it just kind of seems like the perfect fit between the coach, the fans, the franchise, everything that they're doing. It's just that triangle seems to work really well together. See one of the trialists, Freddie Adu. And you're talking about electric and electricity and, and, and all that. Uh, one of the substitutions coming up for Las Vegas Lights FC will be none other than their goalkeeper, Ricardo Ferriño, coming on. He'll be replacing Angel Alvarez in this second half. Also waiting for Kobayashi, who, he'll, who he will be coming in for. Most likely, based on how he played last time around, it would probably be for Carlos Alvarez, but we'll get confirmation shortly as far as that substitution is made and we are underway here at Cashman Field. As DC United kicks things off, Sultan Stiba drops it all the way back to David Osted. As play begins here in the second 45 minutes, it'll be for Alex Mendoza. Substitution, so Alvarez as well as Kobayashi getting some more maneuverability of the ball. Getting two players that can hold the ball and distribute well in the middle of the pitch. As it goes over to De Leon. Comes out of bounds as Chelis looking to get it and he does get the throw in but it goes in favor of DC United. Ball smacked, smacked out really quick. Morgan giving the starting lineup for, or actually the starting lineup for the second half for Las Vegas Lights. Well, we have really the same back four. Obviously, a goalkeeper change. You bring Ferrino in. Um, midfield, the same, except we just have Kobayashi coming in in that holding mid position for Alex Mendoza, who didn't have a bad first half, but you didn't hear his name a lot. He wasn't on the ball all the time. You saw Portugal around it more often. You saw Carlos Alvarez being involved more often, a little bit higher up. I have a feeling this is almost going to flip the triangle, if you have your three in the middle between Portugal, Alvarez, and now Kobayashi, you're gonna have Portugal sitting behind those two because obviously Alvarez is higher and Kobayashi will probably float but be a little bit higher. Yeah, a bit, bit of a four, one, two, three, if you will. We'll see how, how that plays out a little bit. As the ball uh, drop back for Ferrino. Flips it up and knocks it out. Ooh, look at Ben Olsen there as he Shows his skills, stands up, brings it down. Go ahead, throw it in. This is such a side note. I love when the ball goes out of bounds and you see former players who are now coaches kind of get involved a little bit. I love seeing their touch. Oh, there was, there was one, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. It's De Leon looking to send it into space. The run that was being made by Assad, who's playing more of a central role right now. The elbow coming out there. The referee gives advantage as DC United recover the ball quickly, Segura. De Leon trips over and play going in the opposite direction as Torres looking to transition out. Sammy Ochoa saying it out and not much going on there, but Ochoa is able to recover. He flips it out wide, wisely. I saw your, your right foot, I guess your right arm in that case, just flip it out there. I think Ochoa saw it too. It wasn't the best ball, but he saw that that wide one was open and that's a great idea to play it out there. Probably should have been in front of Alatore a little bit, but it still got there and it switched the field. That was effective, but what wasn't effective was the ensuing cross by Isaac Diaz. It'll be a goal kick for DC United. So 
Sanchez saw that. Why are you called Chili's? Because one of the kids around really couldn't pronounce it as a kid. They couldn't pronounce his name. So what they say was, instead of Jose Luis, they said Chili's, Chili's, Chili's. They tell me a Chili. So ended up being his nickname ever since he's, you know, he could remember. So Chili's coach is very known well, known very well, I should say, in circles, especially like in Puebla being crossed and anticipated nicely there by Junior Moreno. Coach at Puebla, coach that Corre Caminos in the Ascenso MX. Always had a flair for wanting his teams to be offensive. One year, his team, Corre Caminos, was the highest scoring team in the Ascenso. As a la Torre with the throw in, again, Junior Moreno. Wiki pushing up, Wiki getting past two. Wiki around three. Wiki sends it out to Alatorre. The header. Samuel Choa can get past Deeper. Here's a good chance, a good opportunity. Has to turn back inside. The chance, a shot that goes. It's parried away incredibly by David Ostet. And DC United will get to reset after the infraction. I love that when Carlos Alvarez got this ball, this little touch, that little touch with his left foot gave him the space to get his hips around and to get that ball on his left foot. That little touch past the defender opened up that far corner. Deflection obviously wouldn't have counted anyway, but that little touch was top class to give him the space. That's why they brought him here. He's one of those different men, different mention or different dimension he offers. In fact, that, that was Steve Clark who came in. Number 26, the goalkeeper, and already getting some work as David Osted called it a night. And here's another transition as Wiki by himself. So is Arriola looking to serve it inside. Here's an opportunity, and Darren Maddox does not forgive. 2 0 for DC United at 51. If you look at the goals that Las Vegas has given up, it's been when there's really just one player back trying to cover, or maybe two players, but out of position trying to cover the space. That's way too much space for one or two players to cover. It tends to happen when a bad decision is made, and then there's players trying to get back. Wiki does what he can. He does a good job closing that space, but that's just awareness from Ariola popping that ball all the way across. And a good finish for Maddox, but he had so much time to do so. But when Las Vegas looks back at the film, they're going to see that these goals, they're from mistakes, and they know that. So it's something that they can clean up, but it's always just one or two players caught back trying to make up for it. Here's Calderon looking to serve it inside for Samuel Choa. And it's going to be a penalty in favor of Las Vegas. Saying that Steve Birnbaum played it with his hand, or is it going to be an infraction from behind? Let's see. Beautiful response from Calderon. Right. Sending that ball in, Sammy Ochoa using his body just like he does. He's a big body, does it so well. Right there, off his hand. Right there, see, punches it. But also what Sammy Ochoa does is he's so big that he gets in front of Birnbaum, and Birnbaum's arguing right now that I just went up for it, used my body, he can't see where the ball is coming because he has Sammy Ochoa in front of him trying to get up for that ball. So Calderon looking to cut that DC United advantage from the spot. Straight ahead run for Calderon. Calderon! Goal! Las Vegas! Juan Calderon at 53 makes it 2-1. And ladies and gentlemen, Lights Goals are sponsored by Plaza Hotel and Casino in downtown Las Vegas. 2-1.
I love that. Steve Clark watched the tape, knew where Calderon went last time. I was wondering where Calderon was going to go, and he placed it to the other side. Beautifully taken PK and has just shown that if you're a goalkeeper, it's going to be hard to go against him and stop a PK because you don't know what side he's going to. He's so good at being able to strike the ball from a dead piece situation. As Darren Maddox is down. It's not a good sight when you have one of your new acquisitions, one of the players that's been arguably one of the best goal scorers in Major League Soccer the past five years or so. As you see right there, Calderon getting his third of the preseason. Another thing about Calderon is when we spoke with Asidro, he was saying anyone can make a PK or hit a really good set piece, but when it counts against an MLS team, when you're down 2-0 at home. Here's another break, and quickly Ferrino comes off his line. That's just showing his confidence, his experience, being able to step up in those moments and bury the PK. Not just place it or take it, but bury it and put that away, making a statement. It's beautifully done with authority too. it it was just like no hesitation good pace good location too so 2-1 <laughs> you start hearing the fans we want freddy we want freddy freddy was warming up and freddy was trying to convince chelis to get him on we'll see if he will get some action but based on what we know he will get some time Set-piece opportunity coming up for DC United. Ball into the air, Ferrinho. Clinging on to that ball temporarily, but a foul being committed in the process. 56 minute of play, your thoughts so far? I still want to see the build-up and the finish in the run of play, but I cannot say enough about Calderon, how he stepped up for his team, really how he buried that PK was beautiful and especially knowing that he just made one the game before just a week ago I think that says so much about him so much about him as a leader on this team as a player I wanted a little bit better in the run of play as this second half goes on the game's going to continue to stretch out and Las Vegas has to be aware and has to make good decisions about when to get forward, when to stay compact at the back, because their back four has been vulnerable way too many times when they get stretched out. So De Leon knocks the ball back to Clark. His fans. This play continues to develop for DC United. As their transition play, well, it's been part of the reason why they're up. As Luisa Segura running, streaking down the middle of the pitch. Kobayashi marking him, the cross to Segura. Anticipated nicely by the former Japanese international. O'Neill Fisher quickly resetting. Arriola, Kobayashi winning it, recovering it. But O'Neill Fisher bodying his way and preventing Isaac Diaz from advancing. Briant. Birnbaum. Coming back is Stieber, but also coming back is Ulises Segura. Who will most likely be in Russia. Ball set through, a nice opportunity, good chance here for DC United, but that ball, a little bit too much pace. As it was knocked in by Yamil Assad. De Leon recovers on the opposite side. DC United now with Segura at the controls. Knocked away quickly by Portugal. Segura. As I mentioned, of course, Luisa Segura, part of the Costa Rican national team. Back in October, Costa Rican newspaper did a starting 11, or actually a starting 10 of Costa Rican national team players that played in Major League Soccer. There was only one position missing. Goalkeeper. None of their goalkeepers for the national team play in MLS. Of course, they do have one that plays at a team called Real Madrid. So he's had a little bit of success himself. Isaac Diaz, they're getting that ball lost. 
Must, nice recovery there by Diaz. He could have brought down. Oh, no. That was not a penalty. Oh, I got to look at that again. I got my doubts there. Assad now looking to break, but Las Vegas finding the ball again. Here's Portugal trying to chip it back, pushing and shoving, and the physicality starting to ratchet up incrementally. I don't know if that word exists, but I just said it. I'll take dips if it doesn't. Segura, Arriola sweeps by. Does he have someone to cross the ball to? He does, but sends it right to Cristian Torres. Another ball, another transition, another chance to send it to Sammy Ochoa. Ochoa not going to be able to get to that ball. I had my doubts on that, but let's see what happens here because did he really yank him down or is it just right there? That's one. Right there. Or does he just feel the contact? I don't know how that isn't called. Isaac Diaz is so good with that little forward, works so hard to keep the ball, and, and he's grabbed and he's pulled. I don't know how that is not a PK. And referee Alejandro Mariscal was right there, so it's not like he was not in the, the right position to not see that ball. Here's, again, DC United looking to break on the transition. Full speed ahead with De Leon. I think De Leon trying to cross, but not being able to find the room. He drops it back and trying to settle things down with Stieber. Junior Moreno. As play is stopped on the opposite side of the pitch, as a man down. I'm trying to see what, why play was stopped. And I'm not exactly sure what Alejandro Mariscal was making the call there for. As you see right there, he, Instruction being given. And the fans starting to start yelling Freddy and Freddy a little bit louder. I'm not sure, I'm still trying to figure out why the referee stopped play if there wasn't a foul or anything, or was there a foul? I guess, there, yeah, there was. It took them quite a long time to call it. De Leon and Steve are behind the ball. So much so, not even the own players knew when, if there was a foul called or not, so. I guess. I wasn't the only one. Coming on will be Freddy Adu. He'll be coming on for Cristian Torres. So we'll see how that ends up changing the shape potentially. Sammy Ochoa gives chase, but Steve Clark knocks the ball to the opposite side. Calderon. So we'll check that with Alatorre. Now Kobayashi. Knocked away there by Briant. Maybe a little slower. Yeah, but you see the fans cheering, and it's Freddy Adu coming on for Las Vegas Lights. Coming off will be Cristian Torres. So you bring an attacking midfielder slash forward. Second forward, if you will, bring off left back. You see a bit of change of shape. I mean, there has to be. There's no way that's just a straight substitution. I mean, yeah, yeah, you yeah. see it do in the middle. So I'm interested yeah. in how that works out. Yeah, you, you won't be bringing Freddie Adu to play left back. It really wouldn't make a lot of sense. But I also don't think you're going to switch to the three back because we saw what happened last game and that didn't work out well, especially in this game when your center backs have already been caught by themselves. Throw in coming up as Isak Diaz complaining. You see the intensity get, it's, it's getting a little feistier out there. Throw into the area. Header and not really much effectiveness there by Garduño. Las Vegas scrambling back and now the counter attack as this is the preferred method of attack by DC United. Here's Darren Maddox, Arriola all alone by himself and not being able to get to it, but Darren Maddox not giving him the best pass either. Not sure if he was trying to go to that far post as he was trying to connect with Ariola somewhere in the middle, and that usually not, doesn't end up good. But look at the pace that he gets forward. There's no lights player that is able to even challenge that. Someone's stepping to the ball, the others are dropping, which is fine, but he is just 
getting through that space, and that was a ball that was kind of in between. He tried to go far post. He also had Ariola there, wasn't able to find him. But that pace, the lights are not able, at least they have not matched that. Uh, that's, I mean, for many teams that I've seen, it's always been a tough matchup to try and, and either equal or neutralize a player with the qualities of Darren Maddox. So it was a tough task, and it's been a tough task so far tonight. Maddox into space, going for Segura. And we'll just leave it at that. You see. It's always great when you do an offside trap to put your hand up, but someone has to drop back just in case the referee doesn't call it because you never know what can happen. And you see the center backs getting back a little bit, but there has to be a player that stays engaged and drops. Even if the whistle's blown, it's great when that happens, but you have to have a player just in case. At times, it seems that they get a bit too generous and they start some kind of really defensively Sometimes you start to see where, where, they're, where they're giving certain spaces and certain angles for DC United to attack on. It's Samuel Ochoa. De Leon. Ball knocked away deep. Climbing over was Garduño over the body of Darren Maddox. There, Carlos Alvarez. Interesting to see him so far back, especially if you've seen him mostly at the number 10 position. And it definitely seems like he's that player, obviously, that slid in when Freddie Adu came in. But you can't help but smile when you see Adu back in the game, especially making his debut for Las Vegas against his former team, a player who took 2017 off and said he rediscovered his love for the game. And you see that happening at all levels, and I'm always a fan of players who choose to step away but then realize that they miss it and are willing to get back into it because it's difficult to get back into that training and just the rigorous part of playing. Yeah. And I'm a fan of that, and you can't help but want the best yeah, for you, him. You, you, yeah, of course. And, and everything that he's been going through, and here's Alvarez setting it in, cleared away there by O'Neill Fisher. It'll be a corner kick coming up for Las Vegas Lights. One thing to note with Alvarez in that left back position, he's going to get forward. Torres did a good job getting forward, but Alvarez is an attacking midfielder. So he's going to get forward up that line. Alatore has to be aware of that and stay balanced on that right side. They both cannot get forward at the same time. Ball near this first post would be a good reference. And now another counter attack. Here comes DC United. Again, Ariola all alone near on the near side. Maddox again taking it. In. Ariola being a, even more expressive as far as that's concerned. Thought he had a chance. He's been just playing on a field all to himself, literally. He has had no one within 15, 20 yards of him. The next time that counterattack happens, I guarantee you the ball is going to be slid across the face of goal, not hit towards that far corner, and Ariel is going to be waiting for it. Portugal, another mistake. Zoltan Stieber there, and Luciano Acosta. All five foot three of him will be coming on. Supremely gifted footballer out of the Boca Juniors Academy. Able to play at a very high level with Boca. After a bit of instability at the club, he decided to part ways, and now he's with DC United going into his second season. Here's a two who can't get to that ball. Arriola. out wide it's Yamil Assad who's been rather quiet in the second half as far as touches of the ball he's been running back and forth with 
the rest of the offensive players as Assad goes down. Wiki with the challenge, no call by the referee, as Adu showing his stuff in very reduced space, but finally having that ball taken away by Junior Moreno, who also has to be given a lot of credit. He's not a player that we've talked about a lot, but every time the ball comes into his, into his sector, he's been there to either disrupt or really destroy anything that's occurred. Well, and oftentimes that's why you don't hear the name a lot because it's that destroyer role, as I like to call it, holding down the midfield and doing his job when it counts. And it might not be anything pretty. It might not be flashy. So maybe you don't notice it as much, but you don't hear us saying he messed up. He's in the wrong spot. That space is open because he's not there. And usually that's what a solid player is. Luciano Acosta coming on. The Argentine. Ferriño. Haven't seen him dribbling too much. Cardunio. A la torre. Adu gets the ball taken away. It's Kobayashi there to support. But quickly it goes to Elisa Segura. The run being made out wide by Darren Maddox. Get anticipation there by Isaac Diaz. He's able to get the ball. Kobayashi in the middle. This is something we haven't seen a lot from Las Vegas. And until that turnover was really good, just the ball movement, maybe shorter passes here, they're switching the field, and they were able to slide side to side. Alvarez now playing essentially as a left back. Acosta looking for Segura, anticipated nicely by Garduño, and he's telling, come on guys, let's get out of here. Shot from outside. Getting the sign and here, as far as this second half is concerned, we need to see a little bit more from Las Vegas. Yeah, and it's just with more intensity. I think we all want Freddie Adu to do well. You hear the team, or excuse me, you hear the fans chanting for money. When he's now in that attacking mid role, which is so important and has been so important to this Las Vegas attack, he gets the ball and it's just a step too slow, or it's just a step backwards when they need to find the space forward. It's just a little bit quicker, a little step faster, and that'll allow them to build forward because they're getting caught in the midfield, turning the ball over and getting dispossessed. You know who else I want to see to do well? Who? No. Your Southern Las Vegas nonprofit organization, as they can get $5 back with every ticket purchased over at lightsfc.com. Visit lightsfc.com backslash kickback for more details. It's DC looking to do well as well. Here's Luciano Acosta. Darren Maddox with the give and go. Here's Acosta running and trying to go at the defense, which is what he does best. Adu, nice touch, showing his class. Full speed ahead is the recently entered Anwar Kanan, but quickly has that ball taken away as it was Briant. Junior Moreno Acosta. Starting to see some pressure there. Here's Freddy Adu as the fans start getting up. Adu holding it and losing his balance, getting knocked down by Acosta. It'll be a free kick opportunity for your Las Vegas Lights. 72nd, now 73rd minute of play as they're looking for that equalizer. I love when Adu gets this ball. He takes his touch and starts dribbling a little central, doesn't get there all the way, but he draws a defender and is able to commit the foul. Excuse me, draw the foul because Acosta tries to get there but has to run into him based on the way he's running. Calderon. Pretty similar to where he got that free kick goal just the other day. Four-man wall, five-man wall. Looking to disrupt a little bit is Alvarez. Also Garduño. Or will it do take it? He's set up for a left-footed shot. Something we saw in the last game also was Huiji on the end, lining up with the far post and kind of just bending out of the way to get in the way of the wall and create that space. But we saw Calderon switch it up on the last PK. Sure, why not? Calderon. Calderon! Just wide. Just wide there by 
Juan Calderon looking for back-to-back -back braces there. Trying to go to this post and to the near post, I should say, or his near post. And that's such a tough ball. He has to go over the wall to that near post. Beautiful bend on it once again, just so confident stepping up, hitting that ball. But he's proven to every goalkeeper that he will face, pick a side, because he's going to choose one, and you don't know which one it's going to be. He can pretty much do whatever he wants with that ball. Place it wherever he wants. He does exactly that as he was trying to hit the goal. Of course, in this second half, Las Vegas Lights heading over down the Maryland Parkway end of the of this Cashman Field. O'Neal Fisher winning that battle and now breaking out quickly as DC United. Assad turning around is Acosta. It's Freddie Adu there doing his best to sell it. like one of the fans is having a good time with his little trinket, just spinning it around, spinning it around. Good for him. And he happens uh, to be right by our microphone. Yeah. <laughs> good. He wants to join us next time, he could. More than welcome to. Arriola, swinging it out wide, but nicely done by Carlos Alvarez to defend that ball off. Portugal, which means call him El Hombre. Alvarez, it just shows how versatile Carlos Alvarez is. He can play at the 10, he can play at the three, he can play in different positions, pretty much wherever Chelis wants him to. And it's so important if he's in that outside back position to have a player with an attacking mind. Because maybe he isn't always physically getting forward, but he has that in the back of his head and is looking to connect and create from that position, which most teams want outside backs that want to get forward or at least that see the game in that way. So it says a lot that you see him getting forward, he can still defend, but obviously if you need an attacking midfielder, he's your guy. De Leon fending off. As those Canaan. Double substitution is Ian Harks. We'll get a look. I've heard that last name before from somewhere. Obviously, Patrick Mullins coming on as well as Darren Maddox gets the night off. So Mullins for Maddox. One of the two substitutions. Of course, Ian Harks getting a look as well. Part of that US under 20 pool. Arriola, recovered by Garduño, a bit more aggressive as you see Ian Hart's coming on for Ulises Segura. Had a very impressive match, assisted on the first goal, created a lot of counter-attack opportunities as the ball not being able to connect was Calderon. There'll be a throw-in coming up for Las Vegas Lights. Adu recovering it. Adu trying to thread that ball through, not enough pace behind it. Kobayashi, another cross, Kobayashi. De Leon clears it out. Kanan on the near side as Chelis will do a little kippy uppy there and play with Carlos Alvarez. Now trying to dribble past two, gets past a third, but that ball deflects off him and off or not as it'll be DC United's ball at the 78th minute of play. I told you I'd like to see what coaches do when the ball comes to them. We saw Chalice with the little footwork. Oh, I thought you liked his ear. Oh, I was looking at the footwork. Oh, okay, okay. Fine. Because I, you never know. Are they going to pick it up with their hands, catch it out of the air, trap well, it, you know show was, us a little juggle? You never know. I was going to tell you. Well, the, the one match, Tata Martino, of course, making the connection here with Yamil Assad and of course trying to like six degrees of separation if you were one match when he was coached down in Argentina. Ball goes over his head, does this number right there, boop, puts it right over. 
Did it look as good as when you just did that right now? Oh, it looked better. <laughs> really? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I love that. Just, I mean, it's kind of showing off, but they're so good. Of so course. much skill. Why not? Put of on course. a show. And now, speaking of good, here's Samuel Cho from way outside. Watch out. Almost ends up on the highway, that shot. Waiting for the ball boy to get that ball in, as you see right there. See Sammy Ochoa just got under it and, well, just take your pick as far as what didn't go right there. I actually don't mind that from Sammy Ochoa because when he got the ball, you saw him check and he had a little bit of space. Clark was off his line just a bit. Obviously he had receded back to his line by the time the ball came. But also, Ochoa is very good with his back to goal. They've been trying to build up through him. No goals have come in the run of play, so he's trying something different, and I'm, I'm not against that. Here's Adiola all by himself as Alvarez went to go offensive. The chance to shot the score for DC United. As it was, or it just came in, what, a couple of minutes ago? Ian Harks getting on the score sheet. 3-1 for DC United, and again, a ball being lost in the middle. And he's, he starts to play two to boot. And I mentioned this earlier with Maddox and Ariola. The next time the ball got forward, it was going to come across the box. Ariola, though, wasn't on the receiving end. He was the one playing it, knew exactly where to lay the ball. Ian Harks just stepping into that space. He's running onto the ball. It's a simple finish for him. Papa and Mama must be proud. He's been one of those young, shining stars for the future of football in the U.S. Another substitution coming on will be for Las Vegas will be Matthew Thomas coming on, number 21. It's Alvarez, and, and again, you mentioned losing the ball in the middle, but also Alvarez goes out on the attack this time, and he's the one that gets caught with Ariola having all types of room to roam. Sanchelis upset, but also looking to see what he can do and what he can say to make adjustments. You start seeing that, Morgan. Where do you start to analyze this? Is right there number 13, Juan Herrera Perla coming on. As he will make his entry as he comes on for Julian Portugal. Acosta, slaloms past two, slaloms past three. Here's Arriola going up against Wiki. Has two, three options. Neither one gets the ball, and the fourth one watches it go by. Juan, you're asking about kind of the analysis of the game and what I thought. If we clip every single good opportunity from DC where they have a chance, it's the same exact thing. The ball is played through, either slipped between the two center backs or a center back and an outside back on both sides. An outside back is caught high and it slipped through, there's a player running on. The same exact thing right and left. So if that's my, if you're asking for my analysis, it's that defensively it has to be tighter. I love when outside backs get forward, but it can't happen all the time. It doesn't need to happen all the time. You're a defender. You have to be aware of your defensive responsibilities. And sometimes that's staying home when you want to get forward, just so you're tight and aware of that attacker. It's interesting you say that. We love when they go up, but coaches love when they come back. That's really what it comes down to, to be, I mean, in all seriousness. I'm a former outside back, loved getting forward. That was my favorite thing, getting forward into the attack, crossing, but Sometimes you just can't go, especially when you've been beat and the ball is turning over in the midfield. It's not that it's just the outside back responsibility. It's the breakdown in the midfield as well when the ball's turned over or up higher when the forward turns it over. But because of that, you cannot go forward at all times, especially if the outside back on the other side's forward. Both definitely can't go forward at the same time. I mean, but at the same time, and I'm gonna take it from your end as well. Is there some communication? And I know I, I know the answer as well. <laughs> Having played, pretty, pretty much played in, in, in a position like that, as play now continuing, I'll get back to you in just a second on that. That ball sweeps right aside and not much going on. Bruno Miranda, Chris Durkin, and Chris Odoy Atsem come on <laughs> for Ben Olsen. 
But Morgan, at this point in the match, I mean, not at this point in the match, but in general, when you do go up, don't you have communication with one of your central midfield, your holding midfielders, that they have to come in and rotate? I mean, it's not just the positioning as well, it's also the rotation and the lack of rotation that's also occurring, correct? Absolutely, and there's communication across all lines in the midfield are calling for the ball because if you get forward, you're not just going to run through and keep your mouth shut. You're going to run forward and want the ball at your feet. So everyone knows that you're getting forward. Your center back sees it and maybe tells the left back if the right back's forward, hey, hold, drop, come central, squeeze the space. There's always communication going, but especially when players shift or get out of position. So there's definitely communication. It's going on, and it's just sometimes just seeing what's in front of you and reading the situation and choosing what to do from there. Alvarez. Corner kick coming up for Las Vegas Lights. In the words of Jay-Z, after the show, it's the after party. Well, after every home game, it's the after party, especially with the Las Vegas Lights, because you can join us at Plaza Hotel for the official, official post-game party featuring live music, $5 match day margaritas, and your Las Vegas Lights. I hope to see you there, because Morgan definitely will be there, just to let you know. And uh, she will be there. And uh, hope everyone enjoys the after party. Header, a chance that goes just wide as Kanan got caught waiting. Was teased there just for a split second. Kobayashi dropping back and collecting the ball as Las Vegas still, despite being down 3-1, looking to go forward, looking to attack. First touch there for the young Odoyatsem. Assad, Durkin, I've been, ever since I've seen him, the first time I got to see him happened to be in Panama City for the CONCACAF Under-17 Championships. And Durkin was just so solid with the United States, of course, part of that World Cup team as well. You see right there the challenge and the fall by Garduño. like he was worthy of a yellow card. A couple of players, oh, forget yellow, they've been borderline red, pretty much playing orange, if you will. Just a tinge of orange. Alatorre, you had Alatorre getting a yellow card in the fifth minute. You also had, or in the 10th minute, I should say, but Carlos, Carlos Alvarez is also getting one in the fifth. So you've had some players that have been conditioned because of getting early yellow cards as well. Garduño adding him to the list officially. As that's the fourth yellow card of the match for Las Vegas, fifth overall. Attempted cross by Kanan, and it'll be a corner kick coming up. So now looking to set up. Kanan was lucky that he was able to draw a corner as he dribbled into the corner and away from goal. Looking to go through! Into the area! side of that. He was able to beat his defender and all he needed was a touch. Just gets a foot on it. Able to punch it in. And ladies and gentlemen, Las Vegas Lights goals are sponsored by Plaza Hotel and Casino in downtown Las Vegas. Hope they get to sponsor some more before the end of the match. Now it gets interesting. 3-2. Ferrino, you get it, I get it. Well, it finally comes to me and I'll take it. Something that I'm interested to see in how Las Vegas does over the course of the season, obviously as they continue to grow in the run of play, technically that ball started off a set piece, but Adu is able to knock it in. But 
they've yet to lead in a game. Both games they've come back from a 2-0 deficit. How do they establish their style of play and get the first goal? Because they have chances. They create opportunities. They're dangerous in the box. They get the ball in there. But how long does it take for them to capitalize on the first goal of the game? Kanan battling, but the white ball gets skied straight up in the air. There's Bruno Miranda. Kobayashi. We're in the final 90 plus seconds of the match, plus whatever stoppage time is given by referee Alejandro Mariscal. As the fans now are getting a little more excited, the smoke starting to emerge. Garduño feeling inspired once again as he becomes the second player in Las Vegas Knights history to score a goal. Aladore launching it into the 18, comes down to do! Left footed shot that just misses target, almost makes it 3 all. And then Chelis with the same gesture and the same body is right there. My partner Morgan Conklin just with their hands overhead in disbelief. Alatore with a beautiful long throw. There's congestion around the ball. Everyone goes for it. It pops to a do, and he's just in the space. You have to have a player there just waiting for it. He gets a good strike on the ball, just a little under to pop it over the bar. Final few seconds, so much time. One minute of stoppage time will be given. And of course, stoppage time is brought to you by none other than La Bonita, the official grocery store of your Las Vegas Lights. See if the lights can muster up one more attack. Chris Durkin. Just knocked deep and right now the difference ends up being off of the right foot of the young Ian Harks. He's with the game winner. And the few final seconds of this encounter. If there is more time that will be added, we'll, we'll find out shortly. Doyatsim to Luciano Acosta. He'll just keep it in the flag, and it'll be a goal kick coming up. Ferrino will try and set it up as quickly as possible. So confusing, it confused the cameraman. As Garduño, here's another chance for Luciano Acosta. Costa, 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 Costa. Makes it 4 2. As he's come through in a big way ever since coming on. And that will seal the deal for DC United. As the time ticks down, you have to be able to close out a game. If you're Ferrino, just get under the ball. You know he's good at set pieces, and he's trying to get that ball into the attack to give his team a chance. Muffs the kick. That's the easiest goal Acosta may ever score. It's right to him. He has so much time. It's just focus, especially as the game closes out. That's the, actually got to start all over again is Kanan was on the opposite side of the pitch. And for Luciano Acosta, that'll be his third goal of the preseason. And those types of mistakes have been kind of like driving a Ferrari with their emergency brake on. And that's pretty much the story from Las Vegas as DC United with a 4-2 victory over your Las Vegas lights. Your final thoughts. Mistakes caused by Las Vegas leads to Las Vegas' defeat. It's that simple. They're, they're able to compete. They have the energy. They have the fight. They're creating chances, but their own mistakes are what lead to these goals against and put them in a tough position and put them in a hole that they have to then climb out of. It's promising. It's a good start. They have the framework to be a really strong team. It's just putting it together. Like that headline, and I'll keep that in mind. But ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. We got more in the post game show coming up after this. 4 2, the final score. Oh, Reminder. 
time to pay the sewer bill. Aha, aha. That's it now. Check, book, check, check, book. Put this up online. Sewer bill done. That was easy. Power bill. Now you can save time. Pay your sewer bill online. Go to LasVegasNevada.gov. And a cure. Here's your Las Vegas history moment. The historic Fifth Street School was the city's very first permanent grammar school. Built in 1936, the building was called the Fifth Street School due to its location on what is now known as Las Vegas Boulevard. This revitalized historic landmark remains a cultural centerpiece in the heart of downtown Las Vegas. Revitalization projects like this, which help preserve and protect the city's history, are possible with help by proceeds from those who buy the Las Vegas Centennial license plate. 4-2, the final score here is DC United and their preseason unbeaten. They now will start to prepare for their opener against Orlando City in the City Beautiful. Let's check out the highlights of this match. Morgan Conklin, what do you think? Well, early on, we definitely saw Las Vegas bring the energy that they needed, but this first goal for DC United, they take advantage of an opportunity in the midfield, a great ball that slid into a space when a defender was out of position, which happens, but it's the awareness of DC to see that and to play the ball there. A nice ball played across from Ariola and just a simple finish. That's what we saw a lot of from DC is the ball slotted to find the open teammate in a simple finish. All right there, Yamila Saad with the opener. But then we started to see the mistakes getting committed over and over again. Yeah, but early on, Gardunio actually did a really good job of tracking in the midfield. But when he does that, he's then pulled out of position and it leads Weeki alone trying to make up for it. Once again, a simple ball across and then the finish for Maddox. But I like the fact that Gardino is stepping into the midfield before all that. The other players just need to squeeze in behind and make up for the fact that he's not there. One player that really came up positive was Juan Calderon sending that ball to Sammy Ochoa. Handball. And of course, he wants to take matters into his own hands, or at least into his own right foot. Does so, puts it in. Third goal of the preseason for Juan Calderon. And it's pretty much an interesting game going into the final stretch of this match. And I think I had the same reaction as Jalice in that footage, seeing him excited because just the way that Calderon struck that ball, he knew where he wanted to go and he placed it. But as the game went on, we saw Freddie Adu make his Las Vegas debut. But once again, in the midfield, the ball gets lost. The defense is out of position. That was really the story of the breakdown. Ball lost in the midfield, defense not tight enough, not where they need to be. And DC just gets forward and is able to capitalize. A simple finish from Ian Hart, simple finish. That's what I keep saying, because when these players are out of position, it's just a ball knocked across. And speaking of simple finishes off the set piece, or actually, check that, Freddie Adu with the assist. Ball comes through, it was off a corner kick, a short corner, Adu gets it, makes it 3-2, but then finally, Luciana Costa, mistake by Ferrino, huge mistake by Ferrino gives him that goal in stoppage time. But the good news for Las Vegas is we're saying mistake caused this, mistake caused that. If the mistake is cleaned up, there's no issue and nothing happens from it. And your man of the match, the Laborers local one, excuse me, 872. Of course, they present the hardest working man of the match. Tonight's player has to be none other than Miguel Angel Garduño. A lot of work in the middle, but also was compensated because of his goal. And he did a great job defensively, like I said, checking with his player, but also getting on the end of that cross, finishing. He was beat defensively in that spot, but he did it on the attacking end and just got a touch. That's all he needed. And for Las Vegas, it's just the beginning. I have to start seeing what occurs, especially on March 17th. Join us on that date on Saturday, March 17th, as your Las Vegas lights visit Fresno FC. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. You want tickets, visit lightsfc.com backslash tickets. Morgan, anything you want to add to that? 
4 2 result that seemed some positives, but the recurring themes still are quite prevalent. I'm looking forward to the regular season because improvement has been shown. The weak spots, or maybe the issues, have also been shown, but there's time to fix it. And I'm looking forward to the regular season when it kicks off. Looking forward to that. And your final score from Las Vegas, DC United 4, Las Vegas Lights 2. Thank you very much for watching. Talk to you later. Peace. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League.